This is the Merkava by Tamiya. The Merkava is an Israeli main battle tank. This model kit is in 135th scale. Um, what does it say here? Uh, accurate in all details with a realistic command commander figure. Movable turret, choice of open or closed hatches. 105 millimeter main gun with thermal jacket, open or closed. Headlamps, open or closed headlamps. Accurate plastic tracks. This looks like a pretty cool kit. Let's look at the side panels of this box. That looks like a real picture of the tank out in the desert somewhere. It's a straight down look at it. Um, what's on the other side? We have more illustrations on the side of the box. This will aid in painting the model and the model tools and cable, tracks. Okay, so um, I'm going to open this box up now, take the plastic off and open it up. And we'll take a look at the parts. All right, I've got the box lid off, as you can see, and I'm going to take the parts out. I, I removed the plastic from off the parts, of course. Mm, now we're going to look at them. All right, first we have the turret. The turret comes in two main pieces. Looks really nicely detailed. Very, very little extra plastic from the molding on it. Then on the same sprue is the upper part of the tank body. Lots of nice uh, detail on here. Okay. <clears throat> Next sprue is, wait, the next part we're going to look at is the bottom part of the tank body known in this case it is a bathtub style part of the tank body the lower section in this model we have some detail here on the sides where the suspension is going to go other than that it's pretty plain okay Next is a sprue that has a lot of suspension parts and some wheels. There are some sections of track that will go on the uh, on the on the outside of the tank as uh, spare track pieces. Here's another sprue that's the same as the one we just looked at. Wheels and suspension parts. Okay. <clears throat> the next sprue we find here is the biggest sprue. Fills up the entire box. Let's see what's on here. We have the side armor 
skirts for, of the tank. <clears throat> we have the rear of the tank. There is a figure right there. Um, some grating or some venting areas that go on the tank. There is the barrel right there of the tank. It is in two pieces, unfortunately. Not slide molded as one piece. Which, you know, it can work out. It takes a little bit of uh, creative uh, gluing and sanding to make it smooth. That's not impossible to do. So that's the last and biggest sprue in the box. Also down in the box is the plastic track. All one piece. Okay. And there's a single piece of paper tech tips. Um, here are the instructions. This is the set of instructions that's all in Japanese. And then down below that <clears throat> is the instructions that are in English. They look to be typical Tamiya instructions from that year, that era, this time, of, <laughs> the time when this thing was produced. Exploding views of the tank parts, where things go, what gets painted, and what color, whether you're supposed to glue something or not. <clears throat> the instructions are pretty good. There's the commander showing the colors you're supposed to paint him. Uh, let's see, there's uh, step 10. That might be the last step. Yeah, it looks like it is. Then in the very back, we have it says mat marking example. Where to put the decals, etc. Uh, this top example is Desert Yellow XF59. The bottom example is Desert Yellow XF59, but with uh, some different markings apparently. And speaking of markings, the decals are in this bag here. There's also a piece that has um, some screen in it for those grills and a bunch of um, plastic inserts for the wheels to hold them in place. And that looks like the decals maybe right there. Not sure. Yeah, there's decals underneath there. So, okay, I'll open this bag when I get to the place where I need to actually use it. Okay, so there you go. That's what's inside the box of this good old Tamiya tank model kit in 135 scale. <clears throat> Go ahead and put all the sprues back. There we go. All right, let's move on to uh, the building process. Step one will be making the idler wheels. Excuse me, 12 of the road wheels, 
uh, two sets of the idler wheels and two sets of the drive sprocket wheels. They all um, have the polycap poly inserted into them so that when you uh, attach them to the um, suspension parts, they will actually turn, supposedly. <clears throat> the road wheels um, are to have a flat black, which is XF1, around the perimeter part of the wheel. Uh, the hubcap, if you will, is supposed to be red. The idler wheel is supposed to have um, a red hubcap also. The drive sprocket does not have any red or black on it. Okay, so let's find the parts for these wheels and we'll have a look at them. Before we start gluing them, we'll do a little bit of dry fitting and cleaning up of them. Okay. Okay. Here is the pile of wheels. These are all the road wheels. These are the idler wheels. These are the wheel sprockets or the drive wheels or the drive wheel sprockets now we have to clean them up and get the poly caps and we'll start putting these things together when I get them all together particularly these road wheels here this whole outside uh, edge of these road wheels here they get painted black uh, they call for flat black um, which um, I might use or I might use NATO black at any rate um, we'll go ahead and start uh, working on these Something to note on uh, many of these wheels I'm putting together is there's a, for example, this idler wheel. There's a notch right there that lines up with, oh, come on, flip this over. Not lines up with a little uh, nub down there inside. So that little nub lines up with the notch inside the other side. And also on the um, uh, the gear wheels, drive wheels, same thing. There's a little protrusion right there that lines up with a notch right there. So just something to be aware of. It helps you put these together the correct way. Um, so yeah, we're coming along. Well, okay, I have all the wheels put together. The idler wheels with their poly caps inside. There's two of those, and there's two of the drive sprocket wheels with their poly caps in them. And then the idler wheels with poly caps in each one of these also. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve of those. These are all going to attach to um, <clears throat> suspension points on the side of the bathtub hull, which is right there. There's also some suspension springs and such that go on there well that'll be in uh, step three I believe step two um, well first of all 
let's look at step one and make sure we got everything done. Which it looks like we did. Okay. Uh, as far as the assembly goes, step one is done. Okay. What we still have to do on step one is paint these road wheels, the black on the outside here, and they show red on the end of the hubcap. The idler wheels, uh, they just show red on the hubcap. The drive sprocket, <clears throat> they show no paint. So that basically means that the wheels themselves will be painted the same color as the tank. Um, if you look at the picture of the tank, it's the desert yellow. And you can see in the pictures that the wheels themselves are painted the same color. So, what I have to do with the wheels now is <clears throat> Excuse me. Paint them the desert yellow. And then on the tires, not the tires, not the tires, but the outside edges of these wheels are going to be black. So I will go ahead and do that. We'll get these painted. And um, then we'll take another look at them, and that'll be the absolute end of step one. <clears throat> Okay. Road wheels. Two idler wheels. And two drive gear wheels. Or drive wheels. Or drive sprocket okay these are all painted ready to go that is <clears throat> all that is necessary to complete step one step two is about the rear panel of the tank is a matter of gluing some small little parts on that I'm not sure what they are. It looks like lights perhaps, rear tail lights maybe? And um, I don't know what else those parts are, but I'm going to go through step one right now, get all the parts, identify where they go, do a little dry fitting, and then glue them in place. Here are the parts necessary for step two. There is some painting involved, but that painting <clears throat> will be left for later in the build of this kit. Um, since this is the rear panel of the tank, it will at one point get glued onto the main body of the tank, and probably some more little parts added to it. But for right now, we will go ahead and put all these little parts on the rear panel of the tank. This particular part that uh, belongs to step two looks like a, supposed to look like a um, bundle of tools with uh, some sort of canvas bag or something wrapped around it. It's going to get painted a totally different color than the rest of the tank, so. 
this will be painted and glued on separately towards the end of this build. So just so you know about that, the rest of this, these parts, of course, will all get put on and uh, painted along with the rest of the tank. So. Uh, interesting to notice here is this um, bottom half of the tank uh, body, the bathtub style hull piece, <clears throat> was originally uh, designed to be motorized. As you can see down inside this, there's the plus and minus signs and the cradles the batteries laid in and then behind those batteries are the little slots where the contact points were that slot right there in the very bottom of the hull is your on off switch I, I'm assuming the motors lay in these tracks inside and connected to these drive wheels at the front so this thing was designed originally to roll along with motors we're not doing that it might be fun to do that but I'm not going to um, <clears throat> so what this is is step three so we're taking this hull piece we're adding all kinds of suspension and gearboxes and some little um, tiny wheels that looks like some kind of sort of roller wheels. I'm not sure what they are. I don't see a name on them. Uh, lower hull. No, they don't give a name to these little wheels right there. At any rate, um, I'm going to now start attaching all these little pieces. This is step three. Step three. I have this one side of the lower hull done. And these are all the parts that go on each side. And so now I have to build up this other side with these parts. Um, let's look at this again. We've put in the drive gearbox, some springs, some idler wheels of some sort uh, hooks on the back started putting some uh, track spare parts on the body and so uh, that's all part of step three and I will continue now and also part of step three is you move to the front and put hooks and track parts on there. So we'll get all of step three done and then I'll show you the results. Step three is now done. Except for painting, which will happen later. Step three involved placing suspension parts on both sides of this lower hull piece. It also involved laying some hooks down and some pieces of track and so I'm going to go through it and make sure all that is actually really done. And now that I look at it, I spoke too soon because there's a little piece right down here of step three that 
is involved right there in the front part of the lower hull. I have to put some hooks there and some track pieces, which I think I said before, but I was in too big a hurry, so I missed it. So now I'm going to do that. Step three is now completed. There are all the track pieces, the hooks, the drive portions of the suspension, gearbox, suspension parts, springs, some uh, idler wheel type things, and some more hooks and uh, track pieces. That is step three. Okay, and now let's look ahead to step four. Step four is taking some of the road wheels and attach them to suspension parts. We have to make six sets of these. And it looks like there's going to be a tiny little wheel along with these road wheels. And these do not get cemented in place. They are just pushed into place um, because the um, poly caps are inside those wheels. And they will press onto the axles and hopefully they will spin freely or roll freely I should say not spin they aren't propellers but they will roll okay so let's move on to step four so step four has been completed as completed as I want it to be for now I should say these uh, large uh, suspension pieces have been put on as well as the back panel of the tank and also the drive sprocket wheel and the back um, idler wheel, I guess it's called. They've been pressed onto their axles with the um, poly caps. So these things actually turn. Pretty cool. All right, so that's step four, except there's an exception here. Step four shows you pressing into place all of the wheels. I'm not going to do that now. The reason why is because I just got through painting them individually with the black that's supposed to go around them. So those will go on later later on in the build after I have put the majority of the tank body and parts together and have sprayed the entire thing with my airbrush the correct uh, desert yellow color and then I will put the rest of the wheels on here and all the road wheels and such So anyhow, um, let's look ahead now and see what step five is all about. Step five is working on the upper hull. And it looks like a series of hatches, the headlights, um, I don't know what some of these other parts are, probably uh, oh, boxes and such that's stored 
ammunition or whatever. Maybe, probably not ammunition, but um, other things. And over here to the side, in uh, pertaining to uh, step five, they, apparently you can do the headlights in either the closed position or the open position. I'm not exactly sure what they mean by that, but uh, I think there's some sort of a lid that would pop up automatically, or they pull a handle inside the turret or the body of the tank and pop the headlights out. I don't know. <clears throat> now I can I can build this thing with the um, uh, headlights in the closed position, and that would make things a little bit simpler because I wouldn't have to paint the lenses of the headlights. But I'll make that decision when I get to it. Right now I'm going to start adding all these parts and pieces and hatches and things to the top upper hull. All right. Okay. Step four is done. Step five is done. Here is the top part of the tank. Step five done. The, um, the hatch right here, I made it so that it will open up. Like so, or it will close like so. There we go. They provide you with uh, some clear plastic to put right here, but I don't know if I'm going to use it. If I do, it'll go on later after the tank is painted. All right, step six is building the gun barrel on the turret basket. Gun barrel is in two halves. And then the basket will have some wire mesh put in it. Okay. Okay. Step six is completed. For the most part I have the basket made and the uh, main gun made up there are little hooks that need to go on the back of this turret basket for you know, hanging ropes and different things probably. Also note that the bottom of the basket you use this mesh that came with the kit and they give you a template right here to cut it with to match the correct size for that thing. See that? And you just glue it onto the bottom. <coughs> And I've started on the turret. It is going to have a lot added to the top of it and the sides of it, but this is all step seven. And I've done that first part of putting the two halves together. All the little um, gizmos that go on top of it are still yet to be done. Kind of looks like a spaceship. And uh, of course the turret basket is done. And the 
gun barrel is done. All the wheels are done, as you can see back there. And they will go on the, on the suspension and axle parts here. All right. All right, um, let's see. I have skipped ahead a little bit and attached the turret basket to the back of the turret already. That does not happen till a few steps later on. Um, where I, what I have got done also in order is step seven. I put the two halves of the turret together and I've attached all those little pieces. There's a lot of um, oh my gosh what are these things called? I don't know. There's some hooks and some handles and pieces like that and then I've moved on down to step eight and this is where the barrel gets attached um, some armor pieces Uh, looks like a couple of hatches, a periscope, and some uh, replacement track pieces. This turret, right? That I mean, excuse me. This hatch that goes right here, this rounded hatch. Um, I am going to try and attach that so that it will open and close. Let's see if I'm successful at that. I should have done this hatch before I put the two halves together. I mean, you can see it down there where my finger is. The idea is to put the hatch in there and the little shaft that goes down this hole, you get underneath there and you heat up the end of a tiny screwdriver or something and you melt the end of that shaft so it stays in place so the whole hatch will stay in place I'm going to attempt to do that if not I'll have to come up with some way to cap the uh, hatch shaft on this thing anyhow um, this is a little armor piece that goes on right here I'm going to glue that on. Also a bunch of these other little parts here. The shovel that they're showing right here, that's going to go on last because it gets painted uh, separately. I don't want it painted as the same color as the rest of the tank. And it's much easier to paint it when it's off the tank. Okay, let's move on.
All right, the main parts of the tank are now painted. And uh, ready to be put together. The only thing that hasn't been painted yet is the tracks. The tracks, of course, are the one piece rubber tracks. Those will get painted separately and then put on the tank, but right now I'm ready to attach the turret, the rest of the wheels, the side skirt armor, and the barrel. So let's go ahead and do that and um, go from there. Here she is put together. It's not finished yet, but got the turret on, the tracks, the wheels. Painted up. I'm starting to do a little weathering on it. The wheels are going to be weathered a lot more. I still have the side skirts to put on on both sides, but those will go on after I get all the wheels uh, weathered up the way I want them. All right, this tank is pretty much done. All the painting and weathering I'm going to do has been done. And the main body of the tank has all the decals on it. So it's looking pretty good. The turret itself is all done. I put the antennas on, all the machine guns. The mortar on the side there. I ran into a bit of a problem though. Um, and that is one of the last things I was uh, attaching to this turret is the uh, tow cable. And it's all one long piece of plastic. And you're supposed to take this long cable, insert the ends of it into the turret right there, some holes provided for it, and then wrap it around and gently, carefully bend it around the corners and glue it in place. Well, that didn't work out so well. This corner where I came to it, it just snapped. So now I have to figure out a way to glue this cable back together and make it look halfway decent. I don't know if that's possible. I'm going to give it my best shot and see how it turns out. So once that is done, that will be the last step in this kit of the Arkava will be done. So. Let's try and fix that poor old cable. Alright, here's the Merkava tank all finished. Here was the commander figure that I painted up. Let's see if I can get him in better light here. Come on, camera. There he is. He 
he's going to go into that hatch, that round hatch on top. And, um, straight down on the tank. This model kit by Tamiya is fairly old. The molds are good. There's very, very, very little flash on it. There were a few fitting issues here and there, however. Um, one fitting issue was right here, where the barrel with this blast bag uh, molded as part of the barrel didn't sit back far enough so we have a gap there so it looks kind of toy like <clears throat> I tried to do something with that to make it fit better and trouble was if I tried to make it fit better on top then the bottom part wouldn't fit right so I just lived with it Um, let's see, we'll spin around this way. So here is the tank with the commander figure out of the top of the tank. Um, the cable that broke at the corner here, I basically just glued it in place there. and. Uh, It didn't come out that good. However, there's nothing more I could do about it. It's funny that that side there snapped like that, whereas the uh, corner over here just bent fine. Well. I am not going to do any more to this tank. I am officially calling it done. Yeah, I get to a point where it's like, do I keep going or just stop? So it's just time to stop. And call it finished. So there it is. It's a nice, fun kit to build. It's a very interesting looking vehicle. I recommend it for the most part it goes together really well instructions are easy to follow and uh, yeah so there you have it nice model kit made by Tamiya the 135 scale Israeli main battle tank Merkava or Merkava
nice fun kit to build. All right. You have a good day.